the only difference between that one and the other ones is a square round. So when I say square round, the base is round and the square tapers into a square so you can spin it round. Hindsight would have been a great thing. I wish I'd have actually um, made them all square rounds. The difference between the way that they function, there is no difference. They all work identically. It's just a different configuration of pot size. When it comes to choosing whether you should use one over the other, it really is personal preference because we've proven over the years that you don't have to have a large pot to grow a large plant with auto pot because of the way that the aqua valve functions and the way that the plant controls the aqua valve. But people are, they like what they've done traditionally. They like what they're used to. Uh, you know, people are creatures of habit. If you want to grow a larger plant, then I would suggest, suggest that you use the XL 25 litre version, a slightly smaller plant, the 15 litre version. And then if you're growing herbs or you're growing um, vine crops or smaller plants, the easy to grow module. But it really is a personal preference. I mean, as I said, we've grown very huge, you know, 20 foot tomato plants in an eight and a half litre pot in three or four inches of coral. So, um, but like I said, people are, cr are creatures of habit and they are familiar with large pots, large amounts of substrate in basic terms, producing larger plants in that. You will get a larger root zone and you will get probably a larger plant in the long term. It really depends on how long you're intending to keep that plant in that pot. If it's a very long period of time and it's a very bushy plant, then you probably will go for the larger pot. But even though I'm saying that, I can grow a tomato plant for 11, 12 months, 13 months in an eight and a half litre pot. So no matter what I advise, I'm being a little bit hypocritical in what I'm saying because you know the, the, the uses of auto pot are very vast. So it really is ultimately down per, per personal preference for people, you know, what they like to do and the way that they like to grow. Well, water and, water and fertilizer really come hand in hand. So unless you are putting fertilizer by hand into the pot and only feeding water, you're still going to be saving water and fertilizer. So traditionally with auto pot, you'll have a tank of water um, that you'll mix the fertilizer in. So you will always save an equal amount of water as you will fertilizer. Like I've mentioned previously in trials that we conducted in I think 2006, 2007 and 2008, we've proven that Autopot is probably the most environmentally friendly water saving system out there today. Uh, even all these years later. And we proved that it can save up to 50% of water and 50% of fertilizer compared to any other system because it's the plant that's dictating how that aqua valve works and only opening and closing under the plant's instruction. So as water and fertilizer are obviously blended together, the equal amounts of fertilizer and water will always be saved in, in equal quantities. No, it's not in all honesty. Um, even though I've, we've always preached in our instruction sheets, if people follow me on social media and look at my research and development facility, I don't think there's one pot in there that's got clay pebbles at the bottom. The reason we advise people to use clay pebbles or gravel or crocs, like our parents used to call, um, call them, which are just smashed up terracotta pots, is because it just adds a little bit of drainage at the bottom. For The, the flood level of the aqua valve is 20 millimetres, and then obviously it goes down to zero and then floods again in accordance to the plant. So all we're trying to do is make people understand that if you have a little drainage zone at the bottom, it makes it just more forgiving for the plant. One thing that I would always mention, and if people do want to use clay pebbles at the bottom or grow stones, um, because the, these two substrates are very alkali. So if you want to put a layer of say maximum 30 millimeters, an inch and a bit at the bottom of, of each pot that you're using, you must, and I, I, can't, I can't advise strongly enough, that you pre-soak and pre-treat the pebbles or grow stones prior to use. And the best way to do that is to soak the pebbles or grow stones in a pH of around 5.0 to 5.5 for a minimum of 24 hours, ideally 40, 40, 48 hours. Tip off that water and you'll find, prior to doing that, you'll find that the pH has risen tip off the water, don't rinse them off because then you'll be rinsing them with more alkali water out of the tap because it generally is more alkali. Just rinse them off and then put them in the base of the pot. What you can also do 
You can also add maybe a quarter strength feed with that solution when you're calibrating the pebbles as well uh, and grow stones because what you're doing at the same time, not only are you calibrating the pebbles to making sure that the, the pH of the pebbles has become more acceptable to the plant, but you're also adding a little bit of background feed there so the plant can take off a, up, up, take off a lot more quickly. So yeah, pebbles and, and gravel and, and, and crocs and grow stones, it's always nice to use them at the, bo the bottom of the pot, but if you're sensible and water your plant through and let the plant establish first, it's not always necessary, but most growers like to use them because it's, it's a nice flood and a nice flood and drain. And we will be bringing out a product called the Airbase next year, which will negate the use of pebbles or grow stones and make it just so much easier for the grower moving forward. Um, reusing soil um, after the first use, um, initially I would have said no on the trials that I have, I, I've conducted in the last 18 months. But I'm a big believer of trying to use something again and again and again so that you're not throwing things away and not being wasteful. So BioTabs is one of the products that we sell, which is an organic tablet feeding um, application to the plants. You just feed water and then add a booster to help the plants. BioTabs recommend that or advise that you can probably use the substrate in those pots up to four times, whether that's an eight and a half litre pot or a 25 litre pot. But what you're doing at the very beginning is you're using beneficial bacteria and creating colonies of live enzymes and bacteria within that soil and making it a very good environment from the very beginning. I think what I did early, um, 18 months ago, I did a trial with, with tomatoes and in eight and a half litre pots using the easy to grow modules and just irrigated and fed using traditional um, mineral fertilizer. Then after 11 months, cut the tomatoes down and then tried to introduce beneficial bacteria afterwards. So I hadn't created that colony and the plants took off really well initially and then keeled over. But that being said, a gentleman called Ken Cooper um, who's, who's part of the National Vegetable Society had been growing his tomatoes the previous year in the 25 litre XL modules. And he pretty much mimicked what I was showing on social media and was a little bit panicked when he saw that my plants were failing and I had to redo them all again. And I, because he'd already been using beneficial bacteria from the very beginning, I suspect he'd already created a nice colony within the pot during that year when he was already growing. So I think it's, it's a little bit of trial and error and I don't think the jury is out because it's been proven that it does work. And yes, you can use substrate again, but it's, I, I would always recommend from what, I'm, what I've trialed and what I've been hearing from other growers around the world is that they are putting beneficial bacteria at the very beginning when they're first using that, that substrate. And then once that crop is finished, then they introduce the crop again and then they're introducing more beneficial bacteria and it just keeps that equilibrium and nice balance and yin and yang going really well. For any questions that you may have, please leave a comment below and we'll try our best to answer. Don't forget to give us a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe to our channel for more high quality regularly released content.